What's up everybody, God bless, hope everyone's doing well, um, I wanted to just go over, um, what I was talking about, um, about that there is going to be a, a, a system of structure or religion, um, in the millennial reign, and remember what it says in, um, in Revelation, you guys, that he's raising up a line of kings and priests. Well, it's because those kings and priests are going to be, um, they're pretty much going to be uh, in charge of paving a wave of glory for the new Jerusalem to come down after the thousand year reign. So um, I encourage you to re read Ezekiel. 40, 41, 42, and 43. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, this is this is God's religion. This is God's structure. And, um, you know, there's, you guys, the, the animal, um, you know, animal uh, purification is coming back. Animal sacrifice and stuff like that in the, in the millennial reign. So in 40, in Ezekiel 40, it says, um, In a vision from God, I was brought to the land of Israel and set on a very high mountain, on which were what seemed to be buildings of a city to the south. He led me towards it, and I saw a man like a figure of bronze standing at the gate and holding a cord of linen, and a measuring rod. Son of man, he said to me, look closely and listen carefully. Note well all that I show you, for this is why you've been brought here. Tell the Israelites everything that you see. And then it goes on to give the measurements um, of of the, the new temple. This is what the new temple is going to be um, in all of its measurements. But then you go into... Um, you go into 40, chapter 40, 23, and it says, He measured from gateway to gateway, and it was a hundred cubits. And then you go to 37, and it says, Its vestibule faced the outer court and had palm trees carved on the pilaster at each gate. Eight steps led up to it opening off the vestibule of the gate was a room in which the whole offerings were to be washed. It's talking about the animals, the whole offerings to be washed. On each side at the vestibule were two tablets where the whole offerings, the purification offering and the reparation offering were to be slaughtered. Okay, so it's talking about there's, there's going to be animal sacrifice again, you guys. I know you um, a lot of people might not understand this right now, but this is the way it's going to be. This is God's plan. This is the plan for the future, or this is what's going to happen in the future. Four tablets used for the whole offering were hewn stone, each one and a half cubits long by one and a half cubits wide and a cubit high. And on them... Uh, on them there to put the instruments used for the whole offerings and other sacrifices. The flesh of the offerings was on the table, and rims a hand's breadth and width were fixed all round inward. <clears throat> okay. So listen to this in 40, uh, verse 44. Then the man brought me right into the inner court, where there were two rooms, one at each corner of the north gate facing south, and one at the corner of the south gate facing north. This room facing south, the man told me, is for the priests in charge of the temple buildings. The room facing north is for the priests in charge of the altar, that is the descendants of Zadok, the Zadok priests who alone who alone of the levites may enter 
may come near to serve the Lord. So, you guys, God, um, you know, and we see this, God did this uh, similar thing when they would do Passover sacrifices with the lamb. And, um, you know, those there were certain people appointed to do those sacrifices. And when we looked at the Ark of the Covenant, nobody was allowed to touch that Ark of the Covenant except the Levites. That is a structure that God has, a holy structure and a holy order. That's a good thing, and that's what um, people in the millennial reign are going to be a part of that. So not all religion is bad, you guys. You got to, um, you know, right now the, the children of God worship him in spirit and in truth. But you guys, once, once the millennial reign is established here, it, there's going to be a temple built and it is going to be a religious system and it's going to be good. It's not going to be man-made religion. It's going to be God re godly religion. And so if you have an issue with that, you know, that's that's probably not a good thing. You know, if you don't want to to be a part of a religion that, um, that God has ordained and is holy and is going to be the reason why glory is going to come throughout the earth so that the new Jerusalem can come down so that God himself can dwell with us. This is, this is part of this structure. Then he measured the room at the far end of the sanctuary. Its length and its breadth were each 20 cubits. He said to me, this is the holy of holies. Okay. Now this is chapter 41 and verse 21. In front of the holy place was what seemed an altar of wood, three cubits high and two cubits long. It was fitted with corner posts, and its base and sides also were of wood. He told me that this was the table which stands before the Lord. The sanctuary had a double door, as also had a holy place. The double doors had hinge leaves, a pair of each a pair for each door. Carved on them were cherubim and palm trees like those on the walls. Outside there, there was a wooden cornice over the vestibule. On both sides of the vestibule were embrasures with palm trees carved at the corners. So listen to this. The man said to me, the north, the north and south rooms facing the free space are consecrated rooms where the priests who approach the Lord, remember, God says, I'm raising a line of kings and priests. The priests who approach the Lord are to eat the most sacred offerings. They are to put those offerings, as well as the grain offerings, the purification offerings, and the reparation offerings, for the place, for the place is holy. When the priests have entered the holy place, they must not go into the outer court again without leaving their vestments they have worn while performing their duties. So they're going to have on uh, certain vestments and clothes when they go into this place where the presence of the Lord is, the spirit of the Lord where he's dwelling, where they're going to have certain clothes that they're going to wear that they have to put on before they go in there but they have to leave or they have to put them on when they go in there and leave them um, off when they leave there because those are that they've been near the presence of the Lord so they're sacred and holy they can't you you can't just take those clothes and just give them out to anybody you guys this is a holy order and a holy structure of things of how they're going to be I can assure you this is the word of God you guys this is a good thing this isn't man-made religion. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, and then this one. Um, okay. Son of man, do you see the place of my throne, the place where I set my feet? Okay, you know when... Jesus, there was a time when a woman came down and worship and and started kissing his feet. That's the, the the earth is the Lord's footstool. 
and the presence, the, the spirit of the Lord, his presence is going to be in a certain area in the temple where his feet are. And that place is going to be, there's going to be a building around it. And that's where the presence of the Lord is going to be. And that's a sacred holy place. And only the priests and and um, the the Son of Man are going to be allowed to go in there. Because just like Moses, Moses was, his job was to bring offerings before the Lord. And a lot of people, the Israelites out in the desert, got jealous of him and got, and they ended up dying, you guys. So it's not good to have that type of mentality. The place where I set my feet and where I shall dwell among the Israelites forever. Neither they nor their kings must ever defile my holy name again with their wanton idolatry and with their monuments raised to dead kings like we do with our presidents. They set their threshold they set their threshold by mine and their doorpost beside mine with only a wall between me and them. They defiled my holy name with their abominations they committed, so I destroyed them in my anger. But now they must put away their wanton idolatry and remove the monuments of their kings far from me, and I shall dwell with them forever. So, you guys, uh, check out Ezekiel. You know, before, before you say that, um, you know, all religion is bad or all religion is poison that's that's it's not true you guys not all religion man-made religion is poison but god is going to have a he is going to ordain and his people will set up a religious system in the millennial reign and it'll be good you guys that's not a that's not a bad thing we should want to do this is something that's going to be pleasing to the lord this is what he wants us to do and we being his servants should want to do that so anyway, I love you guys. Read Ezekiel 40, 41, 42, and 43. Love you guys. God bless.